Uh, so this is uh, uh, an introduction. We try to do an introduction to this uh, RFID technology. I need to know which is your level of knowledge of this technology. How many of you have ever heard about RFID the first time? Good. You are in the right place. Okay, because you already know something about that is going to be maybe too, too basic. In this questionnaire, there is a, a, an end line where we could register. If you are interested to have more information, we have more in-depth trainings in our facilities. We have we organized webinars as well, so we could give more information about this, this kind of technology. What we are going to cover now is a bit of basics, how this technology works to understand the you know, basic ideas, also a bit the flavor of uh, what, what the market looks like today, or just the opportunity, and also some of the use cases that are being used today where this technology is used, and then also which are our value proposition in this market. Okay, uh, there's some, uh, we are just uh, 20 minutes, so we are, I'm not going to go in detail in all the presentations and all the slides, especially those that are uh, we have some videos that are quite visual, but we, we give for you for as a, as a reference you have more detailed information about the use cases. Okay. By the way, I am Jordi Baeta. I'm market development manager, intelligent levels RFID at David Dennison. I've been more than 50 years in this world, and I'm just helping to the adoption of these new technologies in the market. Okay. So this is me. And uh, this is the basics. What is RFID? This is a ba ba uh, basic video that shows briefly uh, what it's all about. This is traditional barcode, one by one. This is RFID. Multiple readings, very fast. Okay, this is the basic idea you have to keep in mind. What this technology is used for, okay? Well, you we can skip then. So, uh, this is all about RFID. This is what you all have to know. Important question that sometimes creates some confusion about RFID, NFC, UHF RFID, RAIN RFID, because RFID stands for uh, Radio frequency identification. This is a bunch of technology under this umbrella. The most popular ones are ultra high frequency. Typically, when we talk just about RFID, we understand that we are talking of this technology. Now we are trying to promote the name of RAIN RFID. And also the HF uh, technology, mainly NFC, near field communications, is what you have in the smartphones. In, in essence, there are different frequency bands. They have some different physics behind. This is long, long range distance, up to 10, 50 meters you can reach with a UHF RFID. This is a short range distance. This is coming from the payment systems. You know, there is this con con contactless uh, credit cards that is just a few centimeters uh, length, okay? Then uh, typical applications are more on the supply chain, store management, what you need this, this uh, uh, long range distance. Okay, and this is more on the payment system, some transport title, titles, you know, and also nowadays it's been more and more popular, the customer engagement. Why? Because this technology is enabled in your smartphones. All the smartphones today have NFC readers. iOS smartphones are a bit limited. But with this new iOS uh, uh, 13, version 13, that has been launched this last week, apparently is finally opening. Apple is opening this thing, but you have the opportunity to engage with all the customers with their smartphones. That's the beauty of this technology. But it's short range. You cannot manage logistics. And this is the opposite. It's long range. And, uh, uh, but today, let's say on, on intelligent labels, I would say 90, 90 plus percent is on this technology and just a uh, very small volume in terms of, of uh, labels is on that side. Okay, what, what, what is an RFID or intelligent label for us? It's just taking the traditional label with some branding information, some information, some, some printed information and some barcodes 
we just add another layer, which is an antenna and a chip with a substrate, a carrier that brings this antenna, and we overlaminate in a traditional label, creating the intelligent label. Okay? Typically, we have here the identification of the product in the consumer goods, for example. What we are going to put is the same identification into the chip in the way by this radio wave system, we catch all the identification of the different products that are in the surrounding, like in the store, on your distribution center, whatever. Okay? So, uh, what we have, a bit of terminology. Typically, we call an inlay this chip, IC, the antenna, and the carrier. Okay? And typically, the tag for us is the final construction, the final label, the intelligent label, okay? Which is, uh, you know, with uh, some face talk, some special adhesive, some branding information. Okay, because there is a lot of uh, confusion sometimes talking about inlays, sometimes talking about tags, or even transponders. Transponder is an old terminology, but is referred to the tag. Okay, everything clear so far? Good. So uh, we we said that on, with this intelligent label, we are going to, or we are going to replicate the product ID of the label, typically the barcode, inside the chip. So the way we are doing that, most likely on, on consumer goods, the most common technology is use N13, you know, the barcode in Europe, and the counterpart is UPC in the US. Okay, so typically you have the 13 digits of your barcode here, and what you are going to do is adding a serial number. That is key, because you saw the, the baby with the reader, they are reading everything around. So maybe there is three instances of the same product, the same, the same shirt, the same color, the same size. And the reader needs to count how many are out there. So he has to de determine if it's one responding three times or it's three different shirts. The only way of doing this interaction is adding a serial number. So serial number is a must on this technology. Okay? And this is how we create uh, uh, the information with that what is written on hexadecimal uh, version on the chip, on the memory of the chip, okay? And that is what is going to respond when the reader is, is trying to do the inventory, okay? That is what is use, using on consumer goods. On automotive industry, they have other standards to identify the parts, for example, and they are going different ways of, of, of framing that. But this is on consumer goods, it's the most popular way of putting information inside attack. Okay? So, oops, sorry. Okay. We saw that we need these three pieces uh, to make it work. It's like in the barcode. You need the barcode. Here you need the tag. You need the reader, the laser beam. And you need a software that is uh, taking this reading and converting the transaction. When you are the cashier in the supermarket, okay, you have the tag or the barcode in the product, you have the reader and the POS and also the system that links this ID of the product with the price, if this, which is the product, which is the price, if it's discounted or not. And then this information is stored in the database in the system. It's not really in the barcode. Barcode only is a license number, is the identification of the product. It's the same on RFID. You, put a lot, you can put a lot of information in the chip but the way that people is using is just using an ID, okay? That then when it's read, the cloud system or the database is recovering all the attributes of this product, okay? Which, are, which is the beauty of this technology. We already saw in the video. There's no line of sight needed. You can read something and it's backwards, okay? You don't need to shoot each single barcode, which is more efficient. You have uh, multiple readings. Reality is that the reader is reading one by one, okay? But for the operator, it's just so fast that this is multiple readings, okay? So you can read, for example, uh, items in a box without opening the box. So on UDC, you receive a box, plenty of items. You just scan through a tunnel or with a reader, and you know what is inside without opening the box, which is, let's say, on logistics and uh, store management, you have a lot of, uh, let's say, improvement on operations. Okay, sorry. A bit of picture, which is the, the market today, 
and, and what is the growth, expected growth, okay? Uh, reality is that uh, this year we expect a growth around 30%. Uh, that is what happened the last five years on this technology. This is out of apparel because apparel is the fast growing market, okay, but probably is not addressable for you because it has a very specific business model. But out of the market, market the, the apparel market, this is the figures that we have today and we expect, okay. Uh, this is uh, the, the apparel market is about 60, 60, 70 percent of the total market. So this is about uh, something between 30 to 30-40%. Okay, just to give you, which is the, this is on billions, billions of tax. Okay, they give you a bit of flavor, which is status of maturity. We have to go fast. So these are different uh, use cases uh, in different verticals. Uh, I'm going to go fast to the detail. The okay, so it's, that's uh, the point of, uh, Today, uh, um, RFID is a kind of identification for the product, but we foresee, let's say, uh, that in the future it could be more than that. It's going to be a link to a product profile, a bunch of information that will, will, will start when the product is born, will add more information to the supply chain and the life of the, of the product, even till the end of the life of this product, okay? So this is a kind of a, a digital profile of the product and we will have more and more information in the product's life. Okay, so I have foresee. Today, the products around us are kind of stuck. They can't do everything they want to do. And if they have any kind of identity, well, it's just a number, but that's about to change. In the future, every product will be much more than a product. It'll come with a birth certificate. It'll come with a person. And it'll grow up in a connected world. For people like Melissa, that means nothing but good things. Her groceries are automatically ordered based on her family's goals and eating habits. A bottle of wine becomes a story about an ancient wine-growing family in Tuscany. A bike becomes a way to connect with new friends and new competition. And her kids' clothes know when it's time to grow up and move on to another family. New forms of digital identity will unlock the potential of every product in the world. They'll look out for people provide them with knowledge and stories, open them to new communities, and be able to manage themselves in ways that make life better. This is the future, and it will be powered by Avery Dennison. Okay, this is our vision on, on, on intelligent levels. Uh, let's say there are different markets that have been more and more active beyond the apparel, as I said like automotive, uh, you know, uh, logistics and, and e-commerce fulfillment, uh, pharmacy and, and healthcare, food industry, aviation, beauty and, and uh, jewelry and accessories. Okay, we will show some use cases. There are some information in the slides. I'm going just through the videos because we are running out of time <laughs> and we want to have some time for questions for you. Okay, this is uh, uh, a use case for reusable crates on food industry, they replace the carton disposable uh, boxes with reusable crates and with the use of RFID, they could control the inverse logistic with a bunch of savings and also more sustainable approach. Okay. Going next. Uh, this is about uh, pharmacy in the hospitals. Pharmacy are arranging the, 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 the drug uh, kits for the operation rooms, for the, the different patients. And it's a very tedious and error-prone activity. And there's this company in, in the, the US that provide this solution. This is an intelligent cabinet to do this uh, checking of uh, the expiring Hi, dates. I'm Tim Crespatz, so. Chief Technology Officer and co-founder of KitCheck. My focus is on developing software that makes hospital pharmacy processes safer and more efficient. 
One of the best ways to see how Kitchex speeds up the kit replenishment process is to look at it side by side with the old legacy manual process. Let's take a look. In the legacy manual process, the first step is for the pharmacy technician to identify what medications were used and what must be replaced. This is time consuming since there are typically between 50 and 150 medications in a kit. Next, he will physically look at every remaining item and read its label to see if it's nearing expiration. Typically, 15 to 20 minutes has elapsed after determining what is missing, removing expired items, and restocking the kit. But the process doesn't end there. A pharmacist must then double check the kit contents for accuracy. He will check every medication's expiration date and then manually record expiration data on a charge sheet. This process typically takes another 10 to 15 minutes. Once complete, the kit will be sealed and returned to the hospital's clinical areas for use. With kit check, manual processes are eliminated. The pharmacy technician simply puts the returned kit into the scanning station and clicks the scan button. The scan process takes five seconds and displays exactly which items are missing and which are expiring. The technician knows instantly what to remove and what to restock. After restocking, the pharmacy technician then puts the completed kit back into the scanning station and clicks the scan button. After the five second scan, the display shows if there are kit errors or that the kit is complete. When complete, the technician clicks print to generate the charge sheet. There is no more manual recording of expiration dates and the scan serves as the double check of the technician. This means the pharmacist doesn't have to perform the kit checking process and can focus more time on clinical care. Here's what we just saw. The manual process took 25 to 30 minutes. The kit check process eliminated the manual steps and only took about three minutes. That's 90% faster with kit check. It's more accurate and frees up pharmacists to spend more time on patient care. Our customers are seeing as much as $4 in savings per item using kit check. For more information, visit kitcheck.com. Okay. Another use case that is being, being popular because IATA resolutions is aviation, back tagging to, to track your luggage when you're checking. And I'm going to show the video. You have all the data, details of what are the challenge, what are the results, but we are running out of time. So, oops, sorry. Oh, what's that? Okay, now it's coming. You can edit the inlay inside. Most of the airports, they operate in our country. Young from four airports. The upload check is the wrong bus card is coming to the plane, just reject it. And also, then if they are able to notify in the app, your particle has the plane, so you are sitting in the plane in order to get back to the Okay, you could skip that. Okay, here's a summary of different use cases in different verticals. The left is homework for you. And uh, let's talk about why why we believe that we, we should partner with us. Okay. Uh, First of all, this is a mature ecosystem. 
there are plenty of uh, you know solid public companies in the different pieces that uh, are involved in the RFID project. Now the, the system is mature, so it's much easier to deploy a new RFID project now than five or ten years ago. There is also plenty of organizations like GS1, University of Auburn, IATA, uh, Rain RFID that are promoting the use of technology and creating the standards to make that smooth. Okay, so these are our four pillars. We have a strategic commitment. We invest uh, a lot of money on new processes, uh, new technologies to improve uh, the existing technology. We are the largest UHF RFID provider and we are supporting most of these uh, global organizations. We have uh, our capabilities, we are up to date. We produce more than 20 billion tags. So it's significant uh, um, number. We have more than 1,000 uh, uh, patents uh, filed, mainly regarding antenna design and uh, inlay manufacturing process. We have uh, approved, uh, the, let's say, the, the ROI and the adoption process with the big companies like Delta Airlines, like uh, in retail, like Decathlon, uh, Macy's, these this sort of companies. As a market support, uh, you, we could train train you and your staff, not only this small event, but also in home and webinars, also giving you technical support when you address the first projects. Also, when you want to start with the conversion insertion of these inlays, we will try to promote the ecosystem and bring into you uh, the right people that could uh, uh, propose you solutions according to your needs. And we are promoting this ecosystem at the end. Okay. So these are a global footprint. This is a real global uh, organization. We have uh, these iLabs, the, those are showrooms. Uh, the, the next one is, uh, the closest one is Unhoos Geest in the Netherlands, where we have a showroom. We could invite your customers and, and we could, uh, uh, let's say, promote and show the different use cases, how it works, touch and feel, and promote uh, the, the technology. We have uh, uh, four, uh, manufacturing plants. The last one in Timisoara, Romania, was started this last summer. We have also two, two places in South China and one in Mexico. And then we have uh, different labs for antenna design, uh, inlay testing, system testing, uh, to support you when you're addressing a challenge situation. If you want to know if, okay, this is reading scenario is feasible or not. Uh, this product is challenged because they have metals, they have liquids. We could test for you and support to choose the right inlay and assess if it's feasible or not from a technical perspective. Okay. So, and fast, I think it's the last one. We are improving day by day. Now we have about more than 29 uh, reference in stock in our hub in Luxembourg for fast delivery. We also have a, a sample program. Uh, we could ship you free samples on a, a sample box with a mixed uh, set of uh, inlays or 25 pieces if you want to make a small proof of concept, and even test rolls to really start testing in your inserting lines and make some uh, uh, pre preliminary runs, okay? And also we have these testing facilities where we could test the products of your customers and see if technically feasible to read and recommend where is the best place to put the label, which is the minimum size to achieve certain readability. We could fully support on that. And of course, we invite you to uh, learn more in, uh, in our other events. We, if you uh, fo uh, don't forget to, to put your inquiry here and we take care and our representative will contact to you. And I think we are for, ready for Q&A. So any questions? Yeah. I have a question about safety. Since it's a radio frequency, yeah. how easy is it to distort? Well, as it's, it's the same, it's a similar band that you have on GSM on, on the uh, mobile phone. So there's a frequency inhibitors with strong signals that, that are illegal. Only police yeah. could use it, of course. Uh, you know, this is, uh, the, the frequency bands are um, managed by the administration. There is some EU, EU regulations. We cannot use a reader and put full power. It's just some regulation in order to not to disturb your neighbors. 
But of course, if you are not following the European rules, you could inhibit the, the, the signal. But that is illegal. <laughs> yeah? yeah you, mentioned, you mentioned at the start about um, uh, low cost and low to medium cost for the um, uh, UHF and the NFC. Yeah. Can you try to, con to quantify that? That's a difficult question. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, Can you try well, to quantify? Yeah. If you want to run a business case, what our recommendation is to use 10 cents as the incremental cost for moving pure barcode to RFID enabled labeling and 15 cents on NFC. And NFC cost is because the kind of applications where NFC used uh, used to require more memory. So more memory, more memory in the chip is more, more cost. And also uh, as a, a question of scale, the volumes moved on, on UHF are larger than the ones on, on HF. Okay, but in principle, should be very close. If we put the same memory, both technologies, HF in production is a bit more expensive to produce because the antenna shape, but it should be in the same range. So there will be 10, 10 cents incremental cost. Exactly. Okay. But in volumes, there are, there are programs that Delta Airlines, this kind of people that is, is uh, using uh, hundreds of millions a year, probably is going more to a five cents range to, to give you a figure. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, any more questions? No, if not, we are going to close and we prepared our colleagues from Mulbauer, who is a, a manufacturer of inserting machine and one of our big suppliers of uh, <laughs> machines that uh, is going to prepare a tour on their uh, booth. If you want to follow them, you want also, you could learn a bit more about how you could convert uh, inlays into intelligent labels.